Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today I'm at the Rock Island Auction Company to show you this fantastic Simeon North flintlock dueling pistol. Simeon North is among the most significant arms makers in American history and is particularly known as the first official pistol maker of the United States. Thanks to his role in producing the U.S. Marshall pistols for decades in the early national period starting with the model 1799 pistols. He was also the maker of the innovative Hall breech loaders and was also a key figure in the development of interchangeable parts manufacturing. This pistol is similar to other known Simeon North pistols from the late Flintlock era, circa 1820, including prominent examples in the Metropolitan Museum of Art and previously in the William M. Lock collection. This pistol and pistols like them by North were likely manufactured around the same time as the pairs North was commissioned to make by the state of Connecticut for presentation to notable American military officers following the War of 1812. Regardless of the name and history attached to the maker of this pistol, it is just overall a beautiful piece. It balances perfectly in your hand. It holds just, it just holds right um, as, as many people who have held fine muzzleloaders um, probably know, there's something about pieces like this one that are just right. Everything about them, the balance, the weight, the grip, and, and this pistol itself is no exception. While we have some notes across this pistol, uh, mainly the engraving and the gold inlay, the gold vent liner, and the engraving here on the trigger guard, it's overall a fairly plain pistol. There's nothing you know, super fancy about this piece, but I think in that subtlety is where it finds its beauty. We have a nice slightly figured half stock on this pistol. There's really not a whole lot of grain structure except for what we see a little bit here on the side plate side opposite the lock. We just have a little bit of grain texture in there that adds a little bit of visual interest to the stock, but because there's, it's a half stock pistol, it's a rather small pistol, there's not a lot of room for a whole lot of detail on this piece. When we look at the grip, we have a slightly worn checkering covering up, you know, what makes up about a third of the stock, um, taking away any room for carving or detail there. On the wrist here, we have a nice plain silver extension, and our barrel tang comes back just about to where the safety is on the lock and features some simple floral and scroll engraving. The tang bolt itself here is also engraved, kind of denoting a little bit of that higher level of quality on this piece. Our lock bolt on the side plate side is also engraved. The lock plate features a nice running leaf border going around the edge. The cock itself has some simple floral patterns and has a running leaf going around the kind of beveled edge of the cock up into the screw. Our top jaw features some more plant-based engraving. It's kind of funny, it also kind of looks like um, sparks coming out of the pan, which based on its location, I think is a nice little nod to the ignition source of this muzzleloader. Around the back, we have some simple defining engraved lines. And I say simple, um, not that the technique used um, was amateur in any way, but just a, it's a simple accent. They didn't need to overdo it to add some elegance to the hardware here. We see that same running leaf on the front of the frizzen as well. This is a smooth bore barrel, but it mics to about a 54 caliber, common caliber for the time that this pistol and pistols like it were made. Most of the hardware on this piece is pretty matte in color, except for our trigger guard. It is still very bright in areas where uh, kind of an aged patina hasn't um, taken over quite yet. But I think is interesting and should be noted on this trigger guard is we have our traditional pineapple here uh, towards the muzzle of the trigger guard and uh, a neat little history fact that I learned uh, from Seth Isaacson here is that the pineapple during this time was seen as a status symbol and there would be people actually renting pineapples to have on the table at their dinner party as a show of wealth. Um, and we see that kind of translated to a lot of muzzleloaders of this time period, especially a lot of English arms uh, that I've seen. But we have that pineapple motif here at the front of the trigger guard. Again, the screws that hold this trigger guard to the stock are engraved much like the lock bolts and tang screw. 
Coming around the crest of the trigger guard, we have a simple kind of coat of arms engraving. It looks like a shield with a cross on it with some floral motifs in that running leaf border continues around the trigger guard back into this hook where you would catch one of your fingers as you held the pistol. As we head back towards the pommel, the trigger guard becomes very plain. The only note of detail being the trigger guard screw that attaches it to the grip. We have two ramrod pipes, one being the entry pipe taking the ramrod into the stock, the other being attached to this barrel rib underneath the barrel. Our entry pipe has a bit of filed detail on it, giving it some shape and some form and a little touch of engraving. There's not a whole lot of space here, but again, we just have a little simple engraving here to add some volume and some detail. The horn nose cap I've, I really enjoy on this piece. It's a little translucent. It has a little bit of color with it. It's not totally uniform. Um, so while you can't see totally through it, the light kind of bounces around in there and gives us a different color on this overall piece that you don't see all the time. Our ramrod also features a tip here that is made out of horn. Looking at this pistol, most of the detail happens here at the tang and at your breech, which is very common for a lot of muzzleloaders. Something that I have not seen very much though, is this barrel profile here at the breech. The barrel is actually cut away. The lock side flat here has been removed an eighth of an inch or so back <laughs> into the barrel to accommodate the lock and the touch hole, getting us, I guess, I imagine very close for our priming pan to our main charge here. Um, but you don't really notice it until you look at it from the top. You can see a step in there where the lock gets flush and it's, it's very narrow. You're taking away almost half of this kind of one o'clock barrel flat here. Two beautiful gold bands wrap around the breech here and we have a little gold extension that says S North Connecticut Middletown denoting who made this pistol and where he was making them. Kind of a nice little splash of color for our signature here. Like some of the other dueling pistols that we've looked at here at the Rock Island Auction Company, our rear sight is actually set into the tang of the pistol. All the way back here, you can hardly see it from that side, it's covered by the lock. You can see it here, looking at it from the side plate side. Really, again, small sights on this piece. I guess if you're dueling somebody, you're just getting up and no, not really necessarily going for a, a targeted shot. You're just trying to make sure you get your shot off first. You don't need a whole lot of a sight picture there, perhaps. Overall, this is a neat piece. It's always fun to hold a pistol made by Simeon North. Um, just really well done. He, he knew what he was doing, and I think uh, could use a little more recognition for that. This is just a fine, light, comfortable pistol, uh, in my opinion. If you'd like to learn more about this or any of the other original muzzleloaders that we're talking about this week at the Rock Island Auction Company, please visit the Rock Island Auction Company on their social media pages. They're posting a ton of fantastic high resolution images of this piece and many more as they go through their halls this fall. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.